pandemic, but very much started before it. And it, and it comes back to our sort of fundamental business philosophy. Um, I don't know if anybody else like me has been doing Joe Wicks every morning and has aching abs as a result. But there's there's something very sort of um, very sort of traditional business school theory and very sort of traditional business practice about Joe Wicks and his his exhortations for us to be more lean. Because if you look back over the, to the history of business, and actually it's true of local government more recently as well, and then government nationally, we've spent a very long time trying to make things lean. And what I mean by lean is taking what we do today and trying to optimise it for tomorrow, trying to do better tomorrow what we did already today by stripping away cost, you know, sort of optimising production lines, continuous process optimization, whatever you want to call it. A lot of our organisations and a lot of my clients certainly spent years and years and years trying to get better and better and better at what it is that they do. And that's been incredibly successful for them. Um, if you talk to organisations like BMW, you know, they've kind of got where they are, they see uh, by teaching everyone continuous process optimization. How do we do better tomorrow what we did yesterday? The problem with this is when you enter an environment where actually your proposition, um, the proposition you're taking to market, the one you spent years polishing and getting better and better at, falls away, stops being attractive, uh, when consumers no longer want it anymore, or when something just much more compelling or disruptive comes along. And it seems that that's happening with greater frequency. You know, I don't buy into this idea that everything's happening faster. Um, it's certainly a, it's a nice, simple idea. It's a very easy one to get your head around. It's very attractive from that perspective. But it's kind of obviously not true. I mean, most of us, you know, woke up this morning in a house, the design of which is probably a few hundred years old. And in the case of my house, you know, is 140 odd years old. We, you know, we both we all slept in beds that are basically the same as they always have or have been, or at least for a long time. Your know, pockets from matches been around a long time. Uh, we all use toilets, I'm assuming, unless any of you are aliens, um, that have been around for sort of 400 years. Uh, and so yeah, many, many things do not change particularly quickly. But what we have seen, and this is the subject of my first book, are these, this, this new phenomenon of these waves of high frequency change, whether the lowering of friction that we've seen as a result of communications and manufacturing and design technology, and the, the sort of the condensing of the world we've seen as a result of globalization um, and advanced transport technology means that we get these very, very fast moving waves of change that flow through different industries um, and turn them on their heads almost overnight. And sometimes those waves of change appear on a six month horizon. Sometimes they appear on a two year horizon, but almost inevitably their, their impact is very disruptive. They tend to be very narrow. And this is an important distinction. Um, you know, the 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 impact of that that high frequency wave of change tends not to be universal. It tends to only disrupt one industry at a time. And um, uh, and so my argument is is that this this sort of this approach of continuous optimization of leanness is the wrong strategy now. And and I've seen over the last few months, last few years, a lot of CEOs really starting to change their strategy. They say, do you know what? Look, I've got five years in this job. Um, and I'm looking at the landscape and the level of uncertainty, and I'm not confident that I can deliver, you know, a few years of, of stellar growth by nipping and tucking here and there. Actually, the best chance I've got of having leaving a good legacy as a CEO is to lay out the platform for sustainable success. And that's what they're starting to do. So, I mean, just, you know, coming back to that point about the, the different types of change, you know, I really differentiate there high frequency change from low frequency change. And I'll come back to the COVID-19 piece in a minute. An example of low frequency change might be something like the advent of the washing machine and domestic automation, uh, which shifted the number of hours that we, and I use the word we advisedly because it's still uh, women who bear the brunt of this, and it certainly was five generations ago. You know, five generations ago, women were doing 63 hours a week of domestic labor. That's now down to somewhere between two and 18 hours a week, depending on which figures you believe, uh, maybe whether or not you've got children, because certainly those of us with kids do at least 18 hours a week clearing up after the little muck cyclones. Um, but that shift, that dramatic shift, which touched every aspect of our lives in terms of our domestic life, our socialising, our ability to go to work, uh, in terms of the leisure industry and the creation thereof, you know, that took decades and decades and we're still a long way from finishing that journey. You compare that to an example of something like the hoverboard, um, which appeared under the feet of Justin Bieber in April 2015. 
um, hit its sort of peak in summer of that year when you know, the Guardian, the Times, the BBC are all running these articles about um, you know, the hoverboard. Is it going to be the Christmas number one? What do parents need to know? Uh, and then sales collapsed again three months later. Um, when two of them blew up and burned someone's house down and the British government told everyone that they were illegal to ride on the roads. You know, that's a really good example of a high frequency change, which eventually created and not quite destroyed an industry in the space of six months, but absolutely caused a huge number of entrepreneurs to lose an awful lot of money, um, cost a lot of the large retailers a lot of money, and actually went, caused a lot of um, small manufacturers in China to go bankrupt um, because they couldn't retool at sufficient speed um, to move from that product set to another one, which they'd been doing for decades before that. So you've got this, these low frequency changes and these high frequency changes, and, and the strategy of continuous optimization doesn't work for the stage of high frequency change. And it doesn't work for the possibility of these very unusual events, these high frequency but high impact events, high amplitude events like COVID-19, which absolutely touch everybody's lives, are, you know, are, are sort of cross-cultural, cross-industry um, disruptions, but very, very rare that we see something like that that appears on a near horizon, um, dis disrupts absolutely everything and goes away again. Chances are we are going to see more of them in the next 20 years, um, whether that's you know, climate change effects, the possibility for further um, pandemics. Um, you know, the WHO was already re re researching the possibility of disease X before this happened because they knew that the, the, the possibility of, of global pandemics was rising. So Thank you.